Hi everybody, my name is Jeremy, and today we're talking about one of the coolest things you can get for your modular system, and that is a MIDI to CV converter. Isn't probably what you thought I was gonna say, but that's what this video is about. Uh, Noise Engineering has just released these little friends, the Univer Inter. It is an eight channel, fully customizable MIDI to CV converter, and it's chainable. As you can see, I have this little TRS cable here, this little baby TRS cable, and I can chain these two out into in. So eight outputs each. These are fully customizable via a web app. Uh, I don't know if any of you have been on Noise Engineering's website, um, but they have a really, really amazing customer portal for switching out firmwares of some of their other modules, um, which is really, really awesome. Completely changes the functionality of the module. You get to try out other modules via firmwares. Well, the same portal allows you to fully customize the outputs of these. The app will allow you to do things like set notes, gates, velocity gates, triggers, MIDI CCs, pitch bend, clocks, um, just a dizzying array of options for you to be able to make this thing spit out exactly what you want to interact with your modular system. That means that you can have things like your DAW talk to your modular system. You can have customized MIDI controllers talk to your system. Um, you can sync your DAW in your modular system. You can sync something like a groove box to your modular system. You can use MIDI control changes to send out CV to various things. You can use your iPad to control your modular system. And we're gonna do all of that in this video. So we're gonna have a number of scenarios in which I go from like sort of like most common uses to some esoteric uses. Throughout, I'll tell you how I set up the Univer Inter and um, we'll have a little jam. And that's what's going on. Thank you to Noise Engineering for sponsoring this video. Let's get started. All right, let's start out real simple. Let's use Ableton to sequence the rack we're gonna send out four separate MIDI channels with pitch and trigger. The pitch will pitch our oscillators around and the trigger will trigger our envelopes. We could use gate too, and if you have a sustain stage on your envelope, you should use gate. But in this case, we're using envelope generators without sustain, so we'll use triggers. Four voices, Surface, Osiris, Laquelic, and Manus and Teratos, all running through appropriate effects. And then another channel is set to channel 10, MIDI channel 10, arbitrarily. And I have that going to drums. So I have multiple channels set up on channel 10, chromatically, and those are gonna go to six different drums. Two channels left on our pair of Univer Inter, and one of those is going to be clock, which is gonna clock Pamela's new workout so that all of our effects can be clocked. You could use other melodic sequencing in your rack or any other kind of sequencing too, once you have Pam's going. And then the other one's gonna be a stop command, which is going to reset things. You can use run, you can use stop, um, transport. There's all kind of stuff that you can do with clock uh, on outputs on the Univer Inter. Let's start by recording some drums and then we'll record a line for each of our oscillators in turn. We use Ableton session mode, so if we wanted to, we could record a whole track in session mode and use the clip launching to play it back in any way that we wanted to. You could also use arrangement mode if you want and just have your whole set programmed out in terms of note events and spend the whole time playing with the knobs, which in my opinion is the fun part of Eurorack. So that's what's going on with this one. Let me record a little bit more stuff and have a tiny bit of a jam, and then we'll move on to the next one. If you want to skip forward, check the chapter markers.
One of the things I really like about Eurorack sequencing is how unique uh, a lot of the sequencers are versus Ableton's piano roll, which is pretty much bread and butter. But what if I could use Ableton almost in a, I don't know, modular way? In this one, I have four probability ARPs from Max for Live, the probability pack for Ableton, which is free for suite users. I have them all set to a different MIDI channel, triggering the voices that we used before. And each probability ARP is set up with a different pattern and a different variation of a chord. And after those, I have a quantizer for, um, I think, major pentatonic. So what I can do is play one note and all four of my voices are all triggered at once and they're all triggered with their own kind of rhythm. When I play with the knobs, I can bring voices in and out. I have settings for all four of the ARPs mapped to a macro in Ableton, which is now displaying on those eight knobs that you see me adjusting right now. So I can adjust rates and octaves for each one of the arpeggiators, giving me a real-time performable arpeggiation device to interact with my modular with, which is frankly really cool. Let's have a little jam on this. MIDI CCs, or control change numbers, are the MIDI equivalent of control voltage. They are pipelines that MIDI gives you to modulate some things that are preset within the MIDI standard, like pitch bend or modulation or aftertouch, sustain, stuff like that, and then other stuff that you can assign. I have these free Ocean Swift MIDI control things that will send out MIDI CCs that I choose, and I have them mapped here, all sending out to Akemi's Castle. So I am now modulating Akemi's Castle, performing Akemi's Castle, CV inputs via MIDI from the push and I'm recording the automation into Ableton which means after I'm done with this performance I could go through and edit all of the automation I recorded therefore completely automating my modular rack. This is awesome in two different ways. One, if you want to fix a performance that you had messed up on, easy to do that. And two, these macros can be assigned to like multiple things at once. You can have one knob control like four or five CCs if you want. It's really, really powerful in your rack. On top of all that, I'm combining this with drums from Ableton, which means I'm using my rack and Ableton's drum sampling capabilities all at the same time. It's really, really cool.
my first experimentation with MIDI and CV coming together is a video I did with the Squarp Hermon, which is a MIDI to CV device, the Digitact, and a bunch of noise engineering oscillators. One of my favorite experiences because you get all the power of the Digitact sequencing and automatable MIDI CCs with the amazing diversity of modular. So that's what we're doing here. I have a Digitact and I have it going to Mutable Instruments plates and Mutable Instruments rings. They're all going through their individual effects as well. And I have four MIDI CCs mapped to each one. In the case of plates, which you're hearing right now, it is Tomber Morph Harmonics and Model. Model meaning that I can actually go through the models that plates has, of which now there are a ton. And I can automate it and I can LFO it and I can do all kinds of things, which means that I can set it per pattern, I can set it per step. <laughs> it's, it's really, really cool. Oh, I like that sound. Let's use this as the basis for starting a track. We'll record this, record some drums, add rings in there, and have ourselves a little jam. is coming from Midget Attack, by the way. Let's have a play on the plate sauce later a bit. I can control all of its parameters from these four knobs. By turning up the LFO set to model, it will automatically go through the models of the plates, as you can see by the LEDs here. In my opinion, you are not gonna find a more engaging and exciting combo than the Digitact and a small rack of modules. It is the best. We're gonna do with something similar here, but with a Dirty Wave Mate. The Mate is a tracker. Every single step that you enter uh, requires note data, instrument data, and a variety of parameters. And you can actually set up MIDI instruments in here with default settings for multiple MIDI control changes. So I've got one for rings, which is what you're hearing right now. You can see I've set up some default values for the outputs. Now you're hearing some of those randomized. So these are the four inputs on rings for modulating it. Here's three parameters randomized. And here's a sequence with that. You can see those values jumping around. All right, now we're switching over to plates. Here's plates just being triggered. starting to modulate some of the values of the module with MIDI control changes. Let's bring those drums back in. I'm gonna switch over to a different model on plates. I'm 
we're gonna modulate plates now with random values. Now I'm gonna switch between different instruments, which are different models on plates, using MIDI control change defaults. Now, by rapidly switching between different models on plates using different instruments on the mate, I can create a full drum kit. I can even add synths. This is all one module being triggered now. It's really, really easy to program the Univer Inter to interact with the Mate or the Digitags or other MIDI sequencer to give you just massive recallable control with your, your rack modules. I think it's really, really, really fun. All right. Well, this is a fun one. What I have in my hands there is the Roland Aerophone Pro, a digital wind synthesizer and MIDI controller. It sends out interesting MIDI, um, like breath and expression. And uh, you can put these into the Univer Inter and use these to not only control a VCA, but also the timbre of your synths. I have the expression and breath controls molted out from this. You'll see multiple channels of them. I also have note coming out of track one. These are going into the 4 a 10, that little red slider thing, so I can attenuate the levels before they go into my synth. The synth is the Laqualic Iteratus Persido. I'm modulating all four of its modulatable inputs for timbre. And it's really cool. <laughs> Definitely a really interesting way to interact with your monitor, and it can get really wild. This is the same configuration. I have plates running into rings as audio and then into beads and i it's just so crazy like rings is resonating plates here and um the timbres from this are just unreal Truly alien music.
Okay. Last one. Bear with me. This is a doozy. What you see in front of you is the Array of Touch. It is a customizable MPE-enabled MIDI controller, and I have created a layout with three separate instruments at once. Each big square is its own MIDI channel, and it sends out a trigger every single time I press the pad. That trigger goes to trigger Renee, which changes a pitch in a preordained sequence. It also triggers the qubit surface. I have two qubit surfaces. The middle slider there controls the decay of the qubit surface via a customized MIDI control change number. And then on each pad, the X and the Y send out a MIDI control change value that is set to change the timbre of the qubit surfaces. The top keyboard there is another instrument on MIDI channel three set to send out a trigger and a note based on the key I play, and that is going to my bass voice. I can play an entire rack, aside from drums, right from this thing, and it is really, really cool. about MIDI and sequencers and all the amazing controls we have is that there's an array of customizability that is just dizzying. And uh, I think this goes to show that with a little ingenuity and the right MIDI to CV converter, you can do a lot. Well, okay, I hope that you have seen the power of this little friend here, this little skinny friend. I think it's like six HP, it's a baby. Eight channels is great, uh, and it's enough to really get dirty with some interesting mapping. I hope that has shown you a little bit of what you can do with this. There are honestly so many other scenarios I could have put this through. I realized at the end of the video that I hadn't even used the iPad for it, and I think that's one of the, probably the coolest uses for it, either from a sequencing perspective or a customized MIDI control uh, panel for it. So definitely think about what you can do with an iPad if you have one and the music apps on there when it comes to your rack. There are just so many different ways that you can you can set this up. It's really, really cool. That's the Universe Inter. I hope that this has been fun. Thank you so much for watching. Check the links in the description to the product if you want to get it somewhere. Thanks again to Noise Engineering for sponsoring this. I love you guys. I love what you do. And I'm always happy to have you on the channel. My name is Jeremy. This is Red Means Recording. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.